Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this edition of the Rambler Sports Locker. I'm Ryan Cole. And I'm Nick Amatangelo. Here's the latest news in Loyola Athletics. Loyola women's basketball head coach Eric Simpson resigned from his post last Monday. He had been the team's coach for the last four years. The past season was the most successful during his tenure and their first winning season since 2001-2002. Their 17 wins was also the most since the 1988-1989 campaign. Loyola made it to the Horizon League Championship game for the first time in school history. They lost there to the 20th ranked team in the nation, Green Bay, by a final score of 54-38. While no reason for Simpson's resignation was given, Loyola has begun a national search for a new women's basketball head coach. Senior runner Declan Murray took third place in the men's 800-meter final at the NCAA Indoor Championship on March 9th. Murray's time of 147.6 was one-tenth of a second shy of breaking his own school record in the event. It also earned him recognition as a first-team All-American. Senior Gina Valgoy also competed at the NCAA Indoor Championship in the 5,000-meter run. She finished 13th overall with a time of 16.04. Valgoy is Loyola's first female NCAA qualifier for the indoor meet and is being recognized with All-American accolades as well. The track and field team will begin its outdoor season at the Vanderbilt Black and Gold Invite in Nashville, Tennessee on March 22nd. The women's golf team will be resuming their season after a long winter hiatus. The team will be back in action on March 24th and 25th at the Saluki Invitational in Carbondale, Illinois. The men's team will return the following weekend at the Spring Break Championship in Lake Worth, Florida. The men's volleyball team defeated their non-conference rival Princeton University on Monday night. After a slow start in the first set, the Ramblers outlasted the Tigers and won the match three sets to two. Thomas Jeske led the offense with 18 kills, while Peter Jesaitis led the defense with 12 digs. The team is back in conference play at Quincy University on March 22nd. The softball team is coming off a rough weekend at the Fighting Illini Invitational. They fell to St. Louis University, University of Illinois, and Western Michigan University. Earlier this month, senior Brooke Andreessen broke the record for most hits in a career in Loyola's March 9th matchup against Western Michigan. The Ramblers will now head to conference play with a 10-9 record. Their game against Purdue this week and their trip to Youngstown State this weekend were both per postponed due to unusually cold weather. The life of a sports public address announcer is a private one. They are right in the middle of the action on every play, yet maintain a sense of anonymity. Chris Lehman examined the career of the voice of the Ramblers, Pat Schultz, here at Loyola as well as in the major leagues. To some Loyola students, the voice that they hear at the Ramblers sports games is just that. A voice. A voice with no name or face associated with it. But what they don't know is that behind that voice is the glorious face of Loyola's assistant athletic director and public address announcer, Pat Schultz. And the good thing about being the PA announcer is you can literally be there and nobody really knows who you are. So that's the way I, I like, I, that's one thing I like about being the PA announcer over other kind of uh, broadcasting. Schultz has been secretly gracing Loyola's crowds with his powerful yet smooth voice for the last 26 years. Number 24, Abigail In that time, he has covered a wide array of sports for the Ramblers. A man named Doug Bruno helped him get his start. Uh, he was the assistant coach for us at Loyola. Now he's currently the head DePaul women's coach and was the assistant on the Team USA women's uh, Olympic team. And he had come up to me and said, oh, you're doing a pretty good job. You know, maybe we could use you sometime. And then Tom Hitchow, who's the associate athletic director, came up to me and asked me to do the uh, PA announcing for women's basketball when they needed an announcer. In addition to calling games for his alma mater, he was given the opportunity to work for his favorite baseball team, the Chicago White Sox. The guy in charge of game productions was for the White Sox was at our game. And he heard me announce, and they had needed a backup announcer coming into that year, so then they asked me to uh, fill in. Along with getting to work for one of his favorite teams, Schultz gets some additional perks. And I was sitting up there one game and a guy and a girl came in and sat next to me and they, the guy started talking to me and I had no clue who he was. He introduced himself as Josh and his wife introduced herself as Ferg to me and we just had a great time talking the whole, the whole like, uh, game. And it wasn't until like, afterwards I realized it was uh, Josh DeMell and Ferg. While celebrities may not frequent Loyola's Genteel Center, it's hard to beat Sister Jean. 
with the Rambler Sports Locker. I'm Chris Lehman. As the chaplain for the Loyola men's basketball team, Sister Jean Dolores Schmidt knows a lot about Loyola basketball, but her college basketball knowledge extends beyond the shores of Lake Michigan. We sat down with Sister Jean to get her expert advice on how she filled out her March Madness bracket. I don't know about the expert part, so I don't want the whole university following what I say. You might lose all your money. I have nothing to lose. While she's modest about her expertise, Sister Jean did admit that she had help in picking the tournament this year from ESPN's College Basketball Power Index, a power ranking also known as the BPI. Four of the top five teams in the BPI made it to Sister Jean's Final Four. I do this with my heart as well as start out with the people I think who win and then kind of work backwards. I really couldn't do my me tell you my method because when I see a school and then look at the size, see how it turned out in its own division league, then, then I have to see how it's l listed in the BPI. Louisville is the highest BPI and is her pick to win the Midwest region. Last, they've been uh, predicted as number one in the uh, BPI. And I also watched them wipe out Notre Dame. And that, that convinced me that they're pretty good. While Louisville is a one seed, her pick to win the South region is the three seed, Florida. Florida seems to have jumped up a little bit now. And I think they moved up from like 31 to 21. Mm -hmm. And then they kept moving up all the time. I, I think they work hard. I know Kansas does too, but I, I think I'd like to see Florida get a chance. In the East region, Sister Jean goes back to picking the top seed to advance to the Final Four. Oh, I have Indiana with great hesitation, but I put them in there anyhow because I know they're a good team. I thought they would be the ones, but it was just, I wanted to have a smaller school get in there and have a chance. But I, I think Indiana's going to do it. Gonzaga is her pick to win the West and fill out her Final Four. Oh, I have Gonzaga. And I, I think they, they really have worked very hard this year. Of course, they're a Jesuit institution. First of all, then they'll be playing um, a Louisville. And in the year of a Jesuit Pope, Sister Jean won Jesuit with her national champion pick over Florida. Gonzaga and Florida, and I do want Gonzaga to win. It'd be wonderful. Now that we have a Jesuit Pope, we could have a Jesuit team as the national champions. And anyhow, there's a certain affinity among all the Jesuit schools that are in here. We're glad to see so many. I would be delighted when Loyola's name comes in here. And when Loyola's name appears in the bracket, we know who Sister Jean will be picking. Until then, for the Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Brendan Bond. Well, it's the time of year where we're all bogged down with brackets. We're joined by Benita and Courtney to throw a few more at you. Well, March Madness is underway. You've filled out and submitted your brackets, but we feel like there are some parts of the game that have been forgotten. Yeah, exactly. There's the band, the mascot, and of course, the fans. So here are some brackets that you'll only find here on the Sports Locker, with everything from Speedo Guy to Super Frog. Take it away, Benita. Thanks, Courtney. Hawks, Huskies, and Wildcats are some of the more popular names for sports teams, but that hasn't stopped some schools from getting a little bit more creative. Here are our top four teams with the most creative nicknames. Up first is the Santa Cruz Banana Slugs against the Evergreen State Gooey Ducks. Yes, you heard it right, the Slugs versus the Gooey Ducks. Not a banana or a duck, both of these are actually Pacific Northwest mollusks. Although banana slugs are pretty slimy, I believe the Gooey Ducks win on Basic Ugly, moving the Gooey Ducks onto the championship. Next up, we have the Trinity Christian Trolls and the Concordia College Cobbers. Although the corn-headed cobber is cute, who doesn't love a troll? Giving the trolls the win and leading them to face off against the Gooey Ducks in the finals. Ultimately, the Gooey Ducks take the championship on account of having, I think, the most obscure name in all of basketball. Go Gooey Ducks! So, what's a basketball game without a little music? Here are four bands that really bring it on the court. First, here in our final four, we have the VCU Peppas Band, facing off against Duke's marching band, commonly known by its acronym, DUMB. That's right, D-U-M-B, DUMB. We also have Butler University's pep band and the Old Dominion Monarchs facing off on the other side. Now this Butler and Old Dominion band rivalry goes back a couple years when the two faced off in the first round of the March Madness tournament and the bands had a Gaga off. Both sides challenged each other to see who had a better version of Lady Gaga's Bad Romance. They didn't determine a winner, however Butler won the game so Butler will make it to the championship. On the other side, I'm going with VCU because while Duke's surfer stunt is classic, 
VCU's musical talent is unparalleled. Between VCU and Butler, I'm crowning the Peppas as the winner because any band that can play Rush's Tom Sawyer during halftime will always win in my book. Finally, we have one of the most important aspects of any basketball game, the fans. Here are our final four picks for the school with the craziest fan or fans. In one bracket, we have Wild Bill from Utah State and the Speedo Man from Duke facing off. Although the Speedo Man is amusing, Wild Bill wins for his numerous creative costumes. In the other bracket, we have Otto's Army, the Syracuse student fan section versus the Indiana Hoosiers. While a close match, Indiana pulls ahead of Syracuse based on sheer passion and overall attendance, leaving the Hoosiers to face off against Wild Bill. One man versus a mountain, but in the end, Utah State's Wild Bill takes home the trophy. So who do you think has the best band? What about the craziest fans? Let us know your opinion on our Facebook page. In the meantime, happy March Madness and good luck with your brackets. I mean, so far so good for me. <laughs> six for six. Great job. Yeah. Marquette pulling out at the end. I love it. Who you guys have going all the way? I, you know, I didn't fill out a bracket this yeah. year. Neither have I. I. It's not worth the loss because yeah. I always you lose. Uh, you know, I lose every year, so I've just kind of <laughs> said it to everyone else to fill out, and I just root for whoever I like the most. Well, I guess i got to carry the team here. <laughs> <laughs> While it's all business here at the desk, it's about fun discussion in the weekly ramble. Sean's ready to lead the heated debate about college basketball, the hockey trade deadline, and Brian Erlacher. Take it away, Sean. Hello and welcome to this week's Weekly Ramble. I'm Sean Keenahan and I must have a little Irish luck left in me from St. Patrick's Day weekend because I'm joined with the talented Rebecca Bear and the talented Audrey Bailey. Yeah. That's right. So, in case you're new to the show and you haven't seen the Weekly Ramble, this is how it works. I'm going to ask a question, we're going to get a response. Whoever answers the question better, in my opinion, is going to get the point. If you disagree with what I have to say, go onto our Facebook page, place your own vote, and uh, prove me wrong. So, let's get started. Not only was Sunday St. Patrick's Day, it was also Selection Sunday. So, the NCAA bracket is out. What are you guys thinking out of the top four seeds that have been selected? How many are going to make it to the final four? Audrey, let's start oh, okay. with you. Okay, starting with me. I would say just one. We'll be oh. lucky to see one number one seed, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of competition out there. Yeah. So, if I had to pick one, I'd probably go with the Cream and Crimson, IU, Cody Zeller, mm -hmm. Oladipo. Yeah. They just really That's know right. how to work inside, so I'm going to say yeah. IU for this one. All right, keeping yeah. it in your hometown. Yeah, yeah. yeah got to right. say hometown. Hometown. Yeah. hometown yeah. I agree with okay. I agree with the Indiana part, but I'm going to go with at least one more is going to make it. Probably Louisville, okay. but not for sure. But I think there's going to be at least two there this year. Okay. Two. Okay, so I'm going to say there's going to be two. I'm going with Gonzaga and Indiana, so I'm going to give Rebecca right. the point this well, time. At least we have Indiana. Right. <laughs> yeah, Indiana all around, right? <laughs> so here we are. It's the first day of spring yesterday. It's 18 degrees, 20 degrees, 30. It's, it does not feel like spring weather. It feels like football weather. So preseason's coming out. How many days, Steve? 136. 136 days of preseason. Let's talk football. Okay. okay. Sounds good. So how can we not speak about Brian Erlocker? Bears oh. offer him a $2 million exactly. deal for one year, and Erlocker's walking away. So what do you guys think? Did Erlocker make the right decision? I mean, did the Bears make the right decision? I think the Bears made the wrong decision. I think that they should have offered him what he was asking for. I mean, Erlocker is the heart of the Bears, and yeah. so many fans are disappointed to see him go, and I really think they made the bad decision there. Okay. Good riddance. Yeah. That was a terrible decision. If I was Brian Erlocker, I would be very upset. And if I was a fan, which I am, I'm very upset to hear about this. Um, he should have just, you know, they should have agreed to whatever he wanted. He's been part of the Bears for 13 years. Like, come on, get this guy a break. All right, so I think you guys are both kind of saying the same thing, okay? I guess. You, you know, say. I would disagree with you both, but since you both said the same thing, I'm going to ask a tiebreaker question. It's about the Chicago Cubs, okay? Out the rooftop is very, very controversial how the Cubs are not getting all this rooftop money. What percentage of the profits do the rooftops give to the Cubs? Ooh, I honestly have maybe 25%. 25%? Audrey, what do you think? Um, 46%. 46%, 17%. <laughs> so that means Rebecca gets another point. So, all right, so question number three. This is a big one, so you better be ready. We're going to talk about more football. And we're talking about the rule that was placed, that was passed yesterday on initiating contact with the crown of the helmet. What do you guys think? Is, is, it, is this the right decision? About you know, 
I would say yes, and I know that a lot of sports fans are really going to disagree with me, but I think that with all the concussions there's been, with all the injuries and lawsuits, I say why not? You know, teach these running backs how to guard with their shoulders, pushing off, that's how to do it, that's how to make a great running back. Okay, uh, at this point in the game, it's too late to really be teaching them too much, like they're too far along in their career. I, it's good in theory, but I don't see how it's going to work on paper, or I don't see how it's going to work being implemented in the game, so I don't think it's really a good idea. Audrey, you are still alive, because I'm going to agree with Am you, I? okay? You should be leading oh, with your shoulder, was, you should not I be leading with your helmet, if it's never no. been that way in football, you're not supposed you're to do with the helmet, period. Hitting. Okay, so... Let's go to our fourth question. This is going to be related to the Chicago Blackhawks. So the Chicago Blackhawks, trade deadline's coming up April 3rd. They lost their third game yesterday. What do you guys think? Did they make a trade before the deadline? Let's start with you, Rebecca. I say no. If it's not broke, don't fix it. So, I mean, they've got an awesome season. They're already number one, so why swap anything out? Okay. I'm going to disagree. I'm going to say <laughs> Thanks. All right. Okay. Is everyone, is everyone done? Okay. I'm going to say that, you know, if Bowman finds somebody that can add, add thanks for the chicken noise. All right. If he can find somebody that can add depth, maybe to the third or fourth line, maybe a great centerman, if he can find someone that great, then I say that it's up to him, it's his decision, and I say go for it. No. I am going to go with Rebecca, and she is going to be wow. this week's Woo! weekly <laughs> ramble winner because, I yeah, I'm sorry, the Hawks, I, I wouldn't touch that team. So <laughs> no. keep, them, keep them together. Go online. Check us out on Facebook. You know, if you think I made the wrong decision, prove me wrong. Thank you for joining us in the weekly ramble. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, guys. Just so you know, the Hawks are perfect and don't need to change a thing. Well, that will do it for us here at the Rambler Sports Locker. Be sure to find us on social media using any of the fine websites listed below. Until next time, I'm Nick Amatangelo. And I'm Ryan Cole. Thanks for stopping by the locker. And don't forget to turn out the lights.